for the second time in a month. Uh, you probably had to stand up in front of your teammates or have some difficult conversations with teammates uh, about something that just lightning bolt basically that, that hit. Um, what's that process been like? And what's your emotions been like over the last couple of days? Yeah, um, yeah, uh, my emotions have been um, <laughs> on a roller coaster, so to speak, this year, you know. And um, my my heart goes out so much. Um, try and say it with a straight face because um, I've already been emotional about every bit of this. Um, but to the family, um, to all the families involved. Uh, you know, you never want to, you, no one ever wants to see this, whether it's a football player or not. You never want to see something like this happen. And, um, you know, it, it broke, it broke my wife and I's heart, you know, honestly. And, uh, you know, we talked about it a little bit, but I can only talk about it so much, you know. Um, but at the same time, uh, whether it's fair or not, I have to compartmentalize and I have a job to do. These are two totally different situations. Um, some similar emotions, some very different emotions. Um, uh, but the message has to stay the same. You don't, honestly, I don't want it to right now. <laughs> if I'm selfish, I don't want it to be. I want to say a lot of different things. But we have a game this week, and I've got a job to do. And so do the, the guys in that locker room. And um, from that aspect, from a football aspect, I hate to talk about both in the same thing. But it's weird, and that's what we're doing, right? Um, from a football aspect, every man in that locker room kind of feels the same way. Um, and But we have work to do. We had to come out and practice. We had film study Monday and Tuesday. You know, like we have, you know, all of these things that we still have to do, right? And so I don't know the right way to handle it, um, but I'm doing my best. You've made a career out of game planning against difficult situations. But inexplicable tragedy doesn't really have much of a game plan. Uh, yeah. How helpless is that as a guy who wants to control? Yeah. Um, you know, just for, for me personally, me, my, in my own life, um, you know, I, I've experienced loss. And so I, I know that feeling. And so my heart first goes to the families that are involved. Okay. Um, you know, when there's things that happen in life for all of us that we don't have control over. And you wish you did. I have a thousand questions I wish I could ask, um, you know, but uh, I don't get those opportunities, you know. Uh, you know, I, I don't understand everything and why certain things happen. Um, and I, and I've, I just forever have relied on the foundation of who I am is my faith. And I'm going to stand on that when it's hard and I'm going to stand on it when it's easy. And, and that's just who I'm going to be when I can control something and when I can't. And so when it comes to this situation, you know, there's so many things out of our control, but then I do sit back and I think, you know, was there something did I, you know, did I not, did I not let him know that he really could, I'd be there for him at 3 a.m. You know, that, you know, I, I'm, I want to be better. You know, um, I think I really look at everything in my life as a learning experience. Could I have been better, you know, to help or something? You know, I just, um, I just wish I just wish I I could have done something you know I look at it that way could I have done anything to help you know even when it seems impossible is there any little thing I could have done better you know and um, I know it's a crazy thing to even think or say but I'm always looking at trying to be a better person what was yesterday like for you what was yesterday like for you just kind of when the news started trickling up that was emotional um, for you know when I even when I see things it's weird when you have kids how uh, how things can be a little bit more emotional than they used to be, um, uh, that's for sure. Uh, now that I have four, you know, of my own, um, instantly my thoughts go to certain places and uh, and things like that. And um, it's hard. It's not easy. I can promise you that. Um, it is a is a tragic thing. Um, and again, I don't. I know as most of you probably even know more than me, you know, but I know as much as I've seen or heard. Um, I, but I, I really don't know the right thing to say to somebody. You know, I, I, I try my best to be there in support of someone or be there for anybody if I knew who to be there for and all those things. But, you know, my, my thoughts, I guess, selfishly went to my own kids and my own family and 
you know, how do I, you know, how do I teach them, you know, uh, you know, how do how do I, how do I take this and turn it into a learning experience, you know, um, and, and things like that, uh, because no one, including Henry, wanted this to happen. How would you characterize the mental state of this team right now? Uh, from a football aspect, I mean, we're ready to go. You know, we had a great practice. Um, you know, we're we're. We're dealing with a lot of things this year. That's for sure. Um, a lot of guys, just what a crazy year. You know, I heard that a couple times. You know, um, I heard, goodness gracious. You know, like man. You know, just like, can we please nothing else? You know, um, not for our own sake, but just for the sake of everyone else. You know, just for everyone involved. You know, um, but from a football aspect, from a competitive aspect, we're we're ready to play football. There's no doubt about that. Um, you know, we know where we're at um, from that from that standpoint, and we know what we have to do. We know that this was a time of year where we hit a lull a couple times, you know, and we can't let, let that happen, no matter what's going on. And I, me and nine one, me and Yon say it to each other every every day. Nobody cares, you know. At the end of the day, nobody cares what we're going through, how your body feels. Nobody cares. We gotta we gotta do our job, and uh, we we emphasize that to each other again today. You know, hey. I got your back. You got mine. Nobody cares, man. We got to go. And before practice, during practice, after practice, you know, we're, we're always just trying to push whoever's listening. That is it fair? No, um, because I want to have emotions about things. I want to think about things as a human being. You know, um, you know, football is secondary when something like this happens. You know, this is we're talking about lives and um, you know a lot of a lot of different lives and a lot of different situations, but. For us, from a football aspect, our mindset is we are we're going to be ready to play. That's for sure. Just about how tragic this all is uh, to kind of turn the negative to a positive. You sang the praise of Henry on the roof room, sang the praise of Zay Jones. Those guys are going to have to step up in a situation like this. Are you really excited to see what's going to what this is going to bring out of them? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. You know, I think I've always thought the world of Isaiah. You know, I've always thought the world of Hunter. You know, I've I've thought the world of those guys and. Um, Obviously, Hunter has gotten a lot of opportunities. Um, now, uh, Zay and our other guys, they're going to get a lot more opportunities. And I, I am excited for them, you know, because they work so hard. You know, I, I think a common theme of when I've talked about Zay is how hard he works. And I think we've seen, you guys have seen it in training camp and how just the relentlessness he practices with. And it's it's literally every day. He's the hardest practicing person I've ever seen in my life. Um, and... Uh, I, I am excited for him. Like when he's made plays in the games, I get you guys hear I talk about him after the game. I'm just so excited for him. Um, now he has a very big role. Uh, the roles change, you know, in the NFL quickly, and his role has changed just along with some other guys. Roles are going to change, uh, but that it's still whatever your role is, do it to the best of your ability, and you know it's got to be like nothing ever happened. You know when Darren Waller. Goes out and he says, I can't play. Well, Foster Moreau has to step up and be the starting tight end. He has a big day, you know. And it wasn't just because it just happened. It was because he's prepared for that moment. And I think Zay and all these guys have prepared for this moment. Before the bye, we had asked about, is it a good time for the bye when you're playing so well and everything else? And you said, we haven't really had a chance to process with, with John and everything else. Yeah. Now, you, don't, you still haven't really, I guess, had that chance. And now something else happened. So, like, how does... How does that process kind of go now? And you, you got him in the field in a couple of days. Yeah, I, I just don't get that chance. You know, um, <clears throat> uh, again, life's not fair. It's good, good learning experience for my boys and my my little girl that I'll teach them. Life life is tough sometimes, and it's not fair, and it doesn't care sometimes. Um, but you're going to hold true to what you believe, and you're going to hold true to who you are, and you're going to be that person whether it's easier or it's not. And that's the standard that I'm going to hold my children to, and that's the standard I hold myself to. If I can't do it, then how can I tell them to do it? You know. And so um, it's hard sometimes. Life sucks, uh, and, it, and it's hard. But uh, I, I can assure you, life is a lot more difficult for some uh, for some other people uh, today than it is for me. You guys have gone through a lot of changes in offense this year between injuries and play caller change, and obviously losing a big piece of your offense to Rugs. Uh, what's kind of the key to you as offense and, and overall unit staying on track moving forward? How do you, you know, practically put that together? I think the one word I can think of is selfless. Um, that our, our our superstar player and our tight end is the most selfless player on our team, you know. And and when your best player is your most selfless player, everyone has to fall in line, you know. Who can who can argue about not getting targets when 
if his targets go from 20 to four one day, you know, he's, he's the biggest cheerleader on the sideline, the game that he's not playing, you know, he's the most supportive, you know, and, and uh, I, I would say that just being selfless um, and, and being prepared, you know, uh, what I love about, you know, when, when Gru was here, what I love about uh, Coach Pasacha and what I love about Mr. Mayock is, is if you don't work hard, you just won't be here, you know, it, it, and I love that because I don't, yeah, I don't have to pull teeth every day. You know, I know that if they don't work hard, they've shown me over time that you're just, you're just not going to be here if you're not going to be ready and prepared when it's your time. And, uh, you know, for these guys, for our offense, um, I, the word I'd just say is selfless. They, Zay Jones is the hardest practicing guy ever, knowing that Henry Ruggs was going to take every rep until he was tired, you know. Um, and now because he played so hard, because he practiced so hard, and we all believed in him, what a great opportunity, you know, and, and, and an exciting moment for him. And just some other guys that I won't name because they may have to play for us and have roles too. Um, but uh, they have prepared for this moment, and that makes me excited, like I said, for those guys because I know they're ready. Derek, this team has a real we and not a me mentality. Yeah. Do you think that's part of the reason for the resiliency in dealing with John and your optimism moving forward? Yeah, I mean, anyone who's covered our team for a long time, them, some more than others, you know, uh, I've always been glass half full, you know, and even when I didn't want to be, you know, uh, maybe a few times you can catch me in a bad mood, but I've tried my best to stay positive, you know, and, and, and just always be, be someone that some little kid that's a Raider fan could look to and be like, man, that's, he's going through a tough time, but man, how does he have joy like that? You know, how can he still be a good teammate? You know, how can he, you know, those are, those, honestly, those are the, these are the things I'm going to teach my children way above like this is how you throw a, a slant <laughs> you know like I, I don't even teach them some of them naturally just do it but um, I will teach them lessons on character and things like that and that's what our team is is built a group of men that I've said the word unity a lot you know you said we you know we you know coach Passage always says we fence you know all these different things right and we have just a group of unselfish people that I say it all the time, it would just be so great to go on a run with this group of guys. It really would, you know, because no one cares who gets the glory, you know. Uh, we've thrown the ball for a lot of yards, and that's awesome. Josh is the first one high-fiving me on the sideline, like, keep going, keep going, because he knows it's going to open him up. And as soon as he's rolling, I'm like, bro, keep going, keep going, because I know the play action and all that's going to be there. So um, when you have guys that are good football players but even better people, um, you end up with a good football team. That doesn't guarantee you're going to win, but it does make coming to work a lot more fun. Have you had a chance to uh, talk to Henry yet? No. Um, honestly, with, with what we were told, I just didn't know if we were able to. Um, haven't reached out. I will always be here for him. Um, that won't change, and I'll prove that over the course of time to him, um, not to anybody else. Uh, but uh, he needs people to love him right now. Um, he's probably feeling a certain type of way about himself right now, and he needs to be loved. And uh, if no one else will do it, I'll do it. Two more guys. We'll add in the ball. You, uh, you, you mentioned a little bit ago, you know, th this time of the year has been the time you guys have had some lulls. You've had some lulls after bye weeks in the past, too. Yeah. It, it, do you guys discuss that? Do you ignore it and just say, hey, that's, that's a mental thing? Is, it, is there an explanation for it? I guess how have you kind of approached those well, things? I think uh, so we have player council meeting uh, with um, – I don't know the exact number, 15 guys of our leaders on the team with Coach Pasacha, and it was addressed that this is a certain time of year where things happen, you know, and certain teams go this way and other teams go this way. And we have to stay on top of everything that we believe in our effort and practice and our film study and the, and the things that we don't talk about that, that we believe separate us. We have to stay on top of that, and we have to hold each other to that standard. Um, because if we don't, then we'll be one of one of those teams that goes the wrong way, and we don't want to be that. And uh, nothing's promised if you just do things the right way, you know. Uh, but it sure does help if we can if we can look at things in the past and say, well, I think this will help us be better. Um, as long as you're trying to get better, we're all going to try that way, and uh, hopefully we can stay 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 uh, stay winning football games and stay efficient on offense and stopping people on defense. That's what it's about. Derek, you you touched on it earlier, but between compartmentalizing things and being human. Yep. How tough is this just to navigate as you know the, the, the quarterback, the face of the franchise, the team leader? 
it's hard. Uh, if I'd be lying to you, if I was like, oh, it's easy. You know, I, I don't think that at all. It's not, I've always been honest with you guys. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, it's not, it's not easy. Um, uh, you know, cause I love people. Um, I care deeply about people. Um, I mean, there's people in this room that know that for sure that I've had conversations with sitting at a table because I just care about people, you know, and this one hurts, you know, because, uh, again, it really affects, um, some families and it, and affected some lives, you know, and, uh, that, that hurts me, it hurts my heart. Um, because I know that there's pain. I know there's shame. I know that there's, uh, anger probably uh all those feelings that uh that no one ever wants to feel or have towards them i know that it's all there and uh that's hard um you know when you feel everything's coming crashing on you i've felt i've had those feelings you know and having people to love you and support you um is what is what helps the most you know you can't do it alone um and so it is it's not easy you know being a quarterback and being human you know uh you know i wish i wish there was a a certain way or someone to tell me this is exactly how you do it because it'd be a lot easier. Um, I think I got a good grasp on how to handle it, but it doesn't make it easy to do. You know, um, doing things the right way is, it sounds easy, but it's not easy to do, right? And so I'm trying trying my best. Um, and again, maybe maybe sometime, sometime in the offseason I'll have time to think think about all this. Uh, I will tell you, I walked by and I, you know, saw Henry's locker today and for whatever reason that got me, you know, like, like he's not, it's not going to be there, you know, um, not because he's fast, not because of what he could do for me, but because of the person that he is and because I love him. And uh, um, he, I mean, he literally texted me, at, you know, at midnight, at a golf swing, you know, hit me and Hunter, you know, um, how's my swing look? You guys need to help me, <laughs> you know, and uh, bro, um, just, just seeing that and then getting the news when we woke up, I just, I could, I mean, I don't even know how to, how am I supposed to handle that? You know, how am I supposed to react? And, uh, I've, I'm trying my best, I'm doing my best. Uh, but I knew, but I do know that God is good and, uh, I'm going to believe that for my entire life. And I'm going to believe that he can change, uh, situations and do things that, you know, we just, we just can't comprehend sometimes. And, uh, I'm going to continue to believe that my kids will believe that. Uh, and we'll keep preaching that even when people don't like it. All right. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you guys. You.